Okay, we are around six past the hour, so let's go and get started. So we have, um, first, thank you everyone for attending. Um, and let's start with agenda bashing. Is there anything on the agenda that anyone would like to talk about that is not on the list? Okay. So events coming up, we have in February 25th through 29th, we have Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Uh, this tends towards demos and, and uh, is more expo focused, uh, very heavy on NFV use cases. Um, and so uh, if you are heading over there, let me know, because I will be there as well. We can meet up. We have Service Mesh Day, which is going to be in San Francisco. Um, I am going to submit a talk to this. Uh, the call for papers is going to close on March 1st. Uh, swapped it around for future because call for papers is more important. Um, April 3rd through 5th, we have Open Networking Summit, uh, ONS, in North America in San Jose. So again, very service. Uh, a uh, very NV centric again. The call for papers has already closed and the schedule has been published as of this week. So we have a few talks on network service mesh that have been accepted in. Uh, the talks I believe are mainly on uh, the Wednesday and Thursday. I don't think we have any talks on Friday. So we'll need to get a list of those and, uh, and post them in. That uh, looks like Ed's beat me to it. And the LFN booth, demo booth, is also, we're also working to showcase a, uh, an, integration, an integration in conjunction with Prem from Lumina. There was also a panel discussion that was accepted in that I believe was put it together by Ramki, which uh, I don't think was uh, was NSM centric, but will very definitely include discussion about NSM based upon the people who are in there. We have in April 9th through 12th, we have the MPLS and SDN and NFV, uh, and NFV event. So if you're in the area, feel free to attend. In April 17th through 19th, we have Container World 2019 with a uh, talk accepted um, by Prem from Lumina. He will be talking on Network Service Mesh. We have KubeCon EU. The call for papers is closed. We will not know about what's, uh, what's happening on that until around March 5th. Uh, the recommendation is to book hotels now. The dates are May 21st through May 23rd. There will also be co-located events at QCon EU, FIDO Mini Summit. Uh, is, um, do, we, uh, do we have any information yet on uh, FIDO, FIDO mini, mini Event Call for Papers? Uh, not yet. Soon, but not yet. Cool. I'll keep asking. So we also have in June, uh, we have, Cloud Native Con and Open Source Summit in China. Uh, did anyone submit a call for paper to, to or did anyone submit a call for, for a talk to, uh, to the Chinese uh, KubeCon? I'm guessing not in this particular scenario. Um, and if anyone, uh, if anyone is attending, let us know and uh, we can get you ready if you want to talk about network service mesh or rather discuss with people. Finally, we have ONS Europe in September 23rd through 25th coming up. Uh, the call for paper yeah, window is currently pending. So once we get more information on that, we'll publish it. Um, announcements, we have Circle CI IRC announcements that were disabled. So we found that the IRC announcements were, uh, were a bit flaky. Sometimes they would send a message, sometimes they wouldn't. Uh, Nikolai has uh, disabled it. Uh, is, are there any other announcements that I should, uh, actually there is an announcement I should give. Uh, we also have a new documentation group where we are documenting uh, and, and solidifying 
the uh, the architecture and wording and so on around it in uh, in our Wednesday meeting. So it's at the same time as this meeting, just tomorrow, and that is being read by or that is being led by by Jeffrey from Charter. So definitely, it's it it's being held in the same in the same uh, uh, Zoom channel as this particular meeting. So feel free to to join us on Wednesday to help us. Uh, we're starting with the glossary at this at this at this particular point. So um, help us work out terminology and then help us uh, help us flesh out the uh, the details of what network service mesh uh, is. Um, also, don't forget to star the project. If we can manage to get 300, then we are able to uh, to add ourselves to the Cloud Native Compute Foundation's landscape. Being a part of their landscape would be a good thing because we'll be able to point to it uh, and get a and get other people to uh, or increase the number of people who look at our project. It also makes it easier when we go to the CNCF and uh, and say we'd like to if, if we'd like to consider becoming a project. And with that, let us jump to the NSM release board 010, which is slated for release at KubeCon EU in May. So. Do you um, do you want to drive the uh, the release board, uh, Nikolai? Yep. Cool. You have the board. So, would you like to take a train share sure. on the board, or do you want to go? Yeah. If if you can just open it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Of course, I can. Also, uh, release should be this one. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so, um, today, um, what we have on the table is, uh, I mean, are a couple of, uh, um, PRs, uh, which we have, uh, in progress. Uh, it's, uh, mainly around, uh, making the, the NSM deployments uh, more robust and, uh, stable. So we have the auto heal functionality, uh, which uh, there is a huge PR by Andre. Uh, great work, great job there. Um, I guess that it just uh, is kind of under final review. Um, we also are working uh, hard on uh, identifying the potential issues with uh, the data plane inst instability that we have identified in several kind of uh, specific scenarios. Um, Ed uh, and uh, Stepan are kind of uh, working uh, uh, on this. And um, I know that, that we have the very first uh, um, debug output already uh, sent to the, the VPP guys, which is, uh, which is a good uh, start, I guess. I hope that we will have um, some automation around this, uh, being able to uh, generate um, um, gen generate these debug outputs in case of uh, instabilities uh, and be able to submit them so that for a faster, uh, let's say, the um, resolution um, resolving of the of the data plane related uh, problems. Um, so um, with this, uh, we also today, uh, like as of yesterday, um, at least European time yesterday, uh, we had um, we had merged uh, a couple of PRs, uh, which uh, made uh, master uh, failing CI. Uh, there, there was some short discussion go going on on IRC if someone was following, but essentially it's around the lines how we ensure that uh, master is never failing with the CI. And uh, the fact today is that um, you are not, um, I mean, after after merging a certain PR, um, we essentially have to enforce the other pending PRs to merge master or to rebase on it. Okay, actually merge is a better practice uh, to just kind of rerun the tests and uh, verify that 
that the this second PR to be merged uh, is not failing after the first PR being merged. Uh, so this is uh, something that um, I'm working on uh, in one of the uh, in one of the PRs here, which should be in the backlog, I believe. Uh, Seven fifty? No, it's not here. But um, yeah, it's uh, something that's uh, that's uh, on the table. Uh, I think that that we are having a good uh, pace for the release for, for now. Uh, one thing that actually is worth maybe maybe discussing is that maybe sometime middle next month, like in the middle of March, we should try to 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 focus more on you know testing and stability instead of you know merging huge uh, huge uh, huge features in master. Uh, but um, I guess that this is also part of the of the discussion that we we had around the spec for the release process. Um, but um, yeah, that's that's more or less the state today. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions, any suggestions on how we how we drive this better. Essentially, my approach, because I am I am driving currently this uh, this project uh, on the, the release, um, and my uh, my job approach is I monitor closely the issues in the PRs and whatever looks kind of critical for the release in terms of you know for the addressing stability and improving uh, like this uh, auto healing uh, functionality that we have for example um, so all all these things I consider part of the the, the initial um, release that we are targeting um, I don't have a better approach for now uh, but um, that's uh, that's really good um, I, I think though that I've already seen like a PR on seven fifty five, so I think that may be in progress. Um, and yes, uh, so I think that's also probably in progress. Uh, containers handling signals. Yes, of course. Yeah. So there is this. Yes, um, there's no really matching. Also, also this this probably is worth that also also the, the, the discussing a little bit. How do we uh, are are we putting here only the PRs, only the issues? Because in some case we have only only PRs sometimes both. So is it worth putting both here or? Yep. Yep. And, and by the way, you, you, I, I think these are both assigned to Ivana. Feel free to speak up, Ivana, if, if we have mischaracterized where you are in the process of these things. Okay. Um. Yeah, regarding this, I uh, tested uh, the output request. I just uh, updated it with... Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were... <laughs> yeah, okay. No, 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 this is good, this is good. Um, yeah, I, I just want, yeah, it's, uh, it's failing with the same problem that Nikolai was investigating. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's basically failing because master is failing, and I know Nikolai is typing as fast as he can to get that fixed. Um, okay. Um, so with that, I don't think that we have anything uh, urgent here. Yeah, I mean, uh, I am trying to bring CI to some to some stable state, and also I have some ideas on how to how to improve CI and to add more tests. But that's probably something that we we yeah. have to. That would that would be fantastic. I think at some point probably we may have to parallelize some things. Um, and or I know right now our tests are currently standing up all of the infrastructure as a fixture and then tearing it all down. Um, yeah. And and there may be an interesting question as to whether some tests can be run in parallel on the same infrastructure. I don't know. And then whether we need to simply set up more infrastructure and run tests in parallel that way. Yeah. Yeah. That was actually one thing that I was considering. What uh, what. What it, because I saw that that in packet we have a, a, a lot of like at least five pairs of master and workers, which can be allocated, and um, maybe it's worth uh, thinking. If they're, of, if they're hanging around there, probably zombies. Um, oh, really? So, yeah, okay. they should be reaped after the test has been run. So if they're hanging about, they're probably zombies. 
But I think the underlying point, which is, could we run two of them, two clusters in Packet? Yeah, we certainly could. Yeah. Um, would it possibly make sense to explore keeping some number running in Packet all the time and then allocating them? And then if it's already allocated and you come in, you need one, or allocating them and then creating a new set when you've allocated them so that there's a set coming up and then you tear down after you're finished with the set that you have, right? Um, to, to hopefully speed up some of the startup time. So there's lots of cool things we could do to make this go faster. If, if anyone wants to make a contribution that uh, checks to see if there are any instances that are older than some period of time that uh, match, a certain, uh, match a certain name or regex against a certain name, uh, feel free to commit that in because then that'll help us kill uh, uh, that'll help us kill projects that are old or uh, instances that are old and save us or and save us and the CNCF money. Okay. Shall we shall we get back to the agenda? Sounds great. Taylor, do you want to Actually, Nikolai or Taylor, either one, do you want to share the agenda now or? I am sharing if you still see my screen, I guess, yes. I can see your screen. Okay. Cool. I'm available too, if needed. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to go ahead then and follow through the specs page review? Um, yes. No problem with that. Good, okay. Yeah, so basically, We've been trying to capture um, specs of things that we think we, you know, things we know we need to work on and how we think that might look, uh, primarily to expand some of the comments um, among the community. And the way they're usually structured is that, um, you know, the spec issue will link to a Google Doc that can be collaboratively edited because it's easier to collaboratively edit them, collaboratively edit them. And I believe um, that. We had, we've actually started keeping a specs, I think Radoslav uh, started a spec subdirectory where we can capture that into the spec subdirectory as part of the commit that implements the spec. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Radoslav? Mm, yeah. Um, so basically, my idea was to, uh, to somehow consolidate this and to make it, um, make it available for future reference because it's a bit troublesome to, to keep track of all the Google Docs that are there. And yeah, um, I have created a template that can be used. So it's easier to, to fill such a spec file and publish it along with your PR. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, this is a template. All right. So it's, awesome. <clears throat> it's a pretty simple one. I. I thought that it's not, uh, it doesn't have to be very, uh, how to say it, uh, descriptive. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in the specification chapter, you, you basically copy all the content and refactor it if needed from the doc file. And uh, the, the, the following two chapters are mostly optional, but are, of course, if available, it will be great to, to be there. And the latest one are reference to, to the PRs and to the issues related to that specification. Awesome. So I mean, I, hopefully that gives us a good way to capture the, some of these specs as we're going, um, which should be helpful to people who come later. Because if someone asks the questions like, OK, well, what are we doing about security? Well, OK, great, there's the security spec. And, and it's living with the code. And so while it has, it has a somewhat better uh, chance of actually being up to date, um, than something that is not living with the code. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Cool, and so we've got um, a bunch of these going on. We've got a spec up for remote mechanisms. I know Daniel's been working on that. Matthew's been working on a spec for, our, um, for metrics, for monitor cross connects and monitor connections. Um, you know, I think, Nikolai, we can probably capture the spec you have for the release process at this point, or at least the dates. Um, should probably be captured. Um, we've got something on the sessions payload type, which I put together to sort of relate to the Envoy as a network service. Um, and then we've got some things looking at proxy network service managers, um, physical NICs, and interdomain NSM. And I think those are have some lively discussion going around them right now. 
Uh, okay, so are we saying that the NSM release process can go to approved or? Mm. I think we, we've definitely bought it on the dates. I know there's a lot of other stuff, so maybe it's uh -huh. something that in the broad sense is still under review, but in the sense of we've worked out what the dates are, I think is pretty, we, we agreed to that last week. Uh, yeah. the dates and then we'll pull a branch. Um, so I know we got at least that far into it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, then I might uh, want to move some of the other things, except the the, the release plan in uh, in a PR for the for for the spec. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a good idea. The, uh -huh. the more it's sort of on the more we sort of capture what we've agreed to, I think probably the better. Do other folks have thoughts or feelings on this? No, I think this is good. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one pending vote here about the code names that we want to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we should probably figure out code names. I think you've got sort of categories of code names, and that's really cool. Um, <laughs> but I would encourage folks to, to, to add some ideas here. Um, you know, not every community decides that it's, it's code name happy. They can be kind of fun um, when a community does like them. But they, let, let's, let's get some more broader input. How do folks feel in general about having code names for releases? I think we should. I know. I want to tell my boss I just employed the GI Joe release. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I, they, they can actually be super super fun. Like my very favorite release ever was from the Seth community. They named one of their releases Kraken. <laughs> so they they released the Kraken, um, and and apparently it was so much fun they wanted to name all their releases Kraken. So, so I just upgraded Mario to Super Mario. <laughs> I mean, there, there are lots of these fun things. Like, I presume that you guys have encountered things like LaTeX, um, which uses transcendental um, versioning, meaning that, that basically every time they release a new version, they add another digit to pi as their release number. <laughs> okay, that's. Um, and I, I know that the, so the release numbers get kind of long. Uh, I, I'm not recommending that particular scheme. Um, and then the other, and apparently something else less well known than LaTeX that I can't remember, decided that transcendental versioning was good. And so they actually are using digits of E. Um. Okay. Um. Okay, do we want to do some, some initial voting here in the chat? All right, I mean, we have three well, we, we have we have themes here. Let's get some specific names from those themes, and I think that's something we could probably ah okay good work from right. So I, I like the suggestion of themes. That's super good. But let's get some suggestions from folks about actual names from those themes, and then we have something concrete we can act on. I guess we use the uh, alphabet principle, like we get something starting with A. We could. I, I know, like one of the things that came up in the Open Daylight community when that when the, the alphabet principle was suggested was somebody pointed out this works great for people working from the Latin alphabet, um, but it's kind of arbitrary for much for the, much the rest of the world. And I mean, that, that's sort of the thing that I think you can take or leave. Um, I know the Open Daylight guys, because of this, decided to name it, thing, name the releases in the order of the elements, um, because they, we, all, we all agree on the order of the elements, and I'm not suggesting that here. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, so I mean, we could do the alphabetical thing, or we could just pick names that we like. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm still debating about where uranium sits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to be allowed. Uh, that Open Daylight is going to be allowed to export the plutonium release. Yeah. I'm not. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Then let's get back to specifications, I guess. Yep. Um, yeah, so I, I think we've actually got pretty good conversations going with a bunch of these. There's one that hasn't made it onto the spec board yet. Let me add it real quick, which is around security and how yeah. about securing things, um, which is going to be, I think, probably super important to get added. Um, and I know that, that Ilya, I think, has started 
with some thoughts on that. Um, because so far for security, we've sort of waved our hands and said, um, gRPC gives us lots of good tools um, for security. And that's true, but we should probably actually use some of them. Um, <laughs> Not all, just some. <laughs> Yeah, and just uh, one area that people can look at uh, is uh, if we end up using things that are that are uh, standard for the control plane. So we have we have a couple areas in security of control and and uh, and data plane and so on. But if you look at just even gaining access to the NSM uh, component itself, there's a, there are a few tools that we could uh, use within Kubernetes, mixed in with Kubernetes secrets and um, and rotating keys and so on. That might be really really nice to to add in, so uh, and then we can tie them into gRPC through the authentication uh, yeah. component. So that would give us the ability to revoke uh, to revoke keys. It would give us the ability to if someone were to to grab one, they would not be able to use it. And we can even depending on the type of keys that we use, if we if we give them names. Uh, then we could also verify that the, that the origin comes from the uh, comes from the name that is that is on the key if it's going through a, a socket to the MSMD. Uh, and of course, inter interdomain is its whole thing as well. But there's a lot of things that we can do, even just to establish authentic to authenticate and authorize the user at the beginning. Uh, like there, there's a lot of stuff there that uh, that needs to be looked at. So if anyone has an interest in, in this kind of stuff, like definitely step up. There's a huge amount of stuff here. Yeah, that, that's, yes. that's an interesting area, definitely. Um, You'll have a lot of fun here. Security is generally fun. Cool, so I know that Ilya has started scribbling some things here. Uh, getting more people collaborating on it will be super, super helpful. Cool. And I've actually added it to the specs board as, as well. Yeah. It's here. Yeah. And if you want some inspiration, uh, like always, look at Istio. So Istio with their Citadel has um, has some pretty interesting uh, concepts. Cool. Yeah. Well. Okay. Uh, should we get back here? Okay, uh, Google Docs, let's review. Okay. Jeffrey, I guess. Uh, okay. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. You. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, we had our first uh, meeting last week. Um, you know, there was a lot of people on that call that are on this call, so I'll let them speak if they thought it was worthwhile. From my own perspective, um, I thought that it accomplished what I was ultimately hoping, and that was pointing out that maybe some of these terms aren't as clearly defined as everybody thinks they are, or they might be clearly defined, but that knowledge is trapped in one individual's head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this is different thing. <laughs> uh, so go up, um, go up, Nikolai, and hit the um, the documents folder. Go hit uh, that link. That would be the action. Yeah. Uh, up at the top under bridge details. Ah, uh, yeah. So yes. the, the stuff will have to survive the Google Docs lifecycle before it moves down to the repo. Uh -huh. So yeah, go ahead and click this. Um, so, I mean, even with Frederick and Nikolai on the call, um, I think they would agree that, um, you know, there's application people who have application type definitions floating in their head. There's networking people who have network definitions floating in their head. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there was a decent amount of collaboration on trying to figure out what the NSM definition is for a lot of these things. We've tried to keep this, um, as you can see, to like one to two sentences per like this. This isn't meant to be like the deep dive document because, you know, you could probably write a small document just on network service endpoints. But um, 
giving a clear definition of what this is so that way when people come in and look at the documentation or this and that, we can link this glossary to everything and people in a single sentence or two can know exactly what a network service client is versus what a network service endpoint is. You can see in the comments there was debate um, during the call. Uh, we went back and forth. I think we only got through about one third of it, so we're going to continue to tackle this tomorrow. Um, you know, for some of the. I apologize for not. You will. I was I was traveling, but I will be there tomorrow. Yes. Cool. Yeah, I, I think um, if you just give it a glance over and kind of when you come in in the back of your mind, kind of be ready to talk about like what the data plane is from the NSM perspective, what the control plane is. Um, you know, there's still some fuzziness around like just the nebulous concept of what a network service is, right? And I mean, this is once again, where like, I've got what I think it is from a network, you know, standpoint, and then the application people have like what they kind of think it is. So um, I think, you know, once we get this glossary done, then we can start picking out individual buckets out of this and start diving in even deeper, um, starting to, you know, go into how the code interacts, you know, with what the concept is. Um, I've been constantly going back to the specs pages and trying to make sure that this document aligns with what we're calling out in the specs. Um, there are a few things where maybe some of the specs reuse terms and, um, you know, that's tried to be called out here. So, yeah, I mean, this is not the sexy work. This isn't like new feature releases, but um, as far as getting like wide adoption, getting into CNCF, things like that, I think this is ultimately where we'll make our money. So also there's a, um, just for some inspiration, there is a glossary of the edge that is uh, owned by the CNCF that was donated by, uh, there was an edge working group. Uh, so it might be worth looking at how they uh, structured theirs in order to, uh, in, in order to, uh, like like what level of detail we were, we'll probably go into a bit more detail than they would because we're describing like an actual product but uh, but it would be good to give them a, a quick look over and we can also make them aware of us as well in time because we would I would love to be able to get things like what is a network service like actually into their uh, in, into their uh, definition and it uh, looks like is that Nikolai trying to trying to connect in? Um, yeah. Is this the open glossary of edge computing? Is this that's um, that's the one. So I don't want to hijack this particular uh, topic, but just it's something something you can look at for some inspiration. Wow. Okay. Thanks. That's that's good. That's really good. Yeah. If you would you link that Nikolai to the meeting minutes um, just at the top because I'm all about not recreating work. Um, oh, yeah. yes, we'll do. Um, so, yeah. Let me just uh, let's see where we were here. Okay, I will. Um, Perfect. Yeah, just to be clear, my, my, one of my goals is going to be to copy and paste some of our definitions to them so that they can have it in theirs once, we, once we're done and see if they'll accept it or not. So yeah, um, short term goal is to finish the glossary and then um, I'm gonna kind of, I'll probably do like another poll or something. Um, there's people in my camp where I want to then start, you know, really diving deep into individual terms in here and building out its documentation, you know, alongside with the code. I know other people are kind of anxious to look at use cases and as opposed to, mm -hmm. um, you know, just basically building out like the framework and. Maybe we have two parallel efforts. I don't know, but um, we'll cover that. I I think though, Mon last not last Wednesday clearly you know displayed that we don't have a common frame of reference for a lot of this stuff, and so I think definitely finishing the glo glossary has to be the first priority. Yeah. We won't go here. Okay. Anything else? Any 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 comments from someone? And of course, please join the call. It's fun. Oh, okay. So it's also here. I should be able to join tomorrow. Last week, I had an all-day meeting conflict. 
Yeah, even I was traveling, so I couldn't join. So, in fact, uh, what I have done was, uh, so in fact, uh, I was giving a session internally just to uh, get everyone on the same page. I put across a few slides. Uh, it was a bit cumbersome to uh, simplify certain concepts, but I can share some of those from my experience. I'll join the call Perfect. tomorrow. Yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. And as a random sidebar, um, Prim fixed the calendar invite for us. So that's on the main calendar, and we did update the site. So on the .io site under the community tab, the, um, the meeting is listed, and it'll show up on the calendar. You got two R's there. Oh. Because I'm watching, Nikolai. Yeah, it would be easier to click here. <laughs> A real quick gut check. Um, how was the experience of updating the website? It took me maybe 10 minutes tops. Awesome. We're, we're That's super simple. Mm -hmm. I think the hardest part is actually oh. chasing someone down to uh, accept the pull request. <laughs> Apologies, okay. I should watch more closely. Okay, everything is here, checked. So yeah, um, feel free to argue with us on Wednesdays on what you think <laughs> the golden definition of a term is. Um, I definitely learned a lot. Um, so, you said um, it's not sexy, but it's a worthwhile endeavor, and uh, you definitely come away with a lot more knowledge than you had before the calls. Okay. So. so the next bullet um, I threw up there, and I just wanted to like maybe throw this out at the group. I know we're very heavy Kubernetes focused right now, but um, the more and more I think about it, and the more and more I wonder how we push adoption into telcos early. I mean, especially if you scroll up and you see um, all of the different talks, other than like, you know, service mesh days, et cetera, et cetera, like 80% of the conferences all say that there's a NFE subcontext or a telco subcontext. Um, I was thinking more and more that probably just because the state of CNFs, quote unquote, is probably not going to be a real commercial reality until sometime next year, if we're being completely honest. Mm -hmm. So showing, um, a service, a network service that allows me to host all of the web apps and you know just basic utility services that I'm running in my data centers, and then service chaining them via NSM to a VNF, via you know a virtual CSR, a virtual firewall, or whatever in like a VMware or an OpenStack um, environment, I think would catch people's attention, right? So. I mean, trying to boil the ocean right now and solve the CNF thing is probably, you know, a long-term goal, but showing immediately how all these companies can use their brownfield, you know, VIMs with all their modern Kubernetes infrastructure that their applications developers are using would probably ingratiate us with a lot of director and VP types. Yeah, I think this is an important uh, topic. Uh, I believe it for Frederick and uh, myself and Fasila, we were discussing about it. And uh, some of this can be probably uh, Courier. There's a project called OpenStack Courier, which tries to bridge Kubernetes and the OpenStack world. Uh, probably we can get some insights from that. That is one. Second thing is also I'm looking at to integrate with Open Daylight, uh, wherein um, the simpler one was essentially to use the gRPC uh, endpoint and invoke from open daylight. Um, but for sure there are different models. Uh, I think we can discuss, this is a very, very important area. Uh, we would probably need to discuss my, my, more about it. I guess it's probably the simplest first thing is what I think uh, Prem and which is just provide a, um, you know, basically a, a, you know, external network service manager or something that talks to the, the gRPC API that will expose neutron networks as a network service so that we can you know, pods up to them. Um, that's probably the very, very, very simplest thing um, that, that could be done here. And, and I suspect just that would be hyper for a lot of people. Yeah, I think if you had something as simple as just putting like, you know, an Apache or an Nginx web server in a Kubernetes cluster, and then having a virtual firewall sitting in an OpenStack or VMware cluster somewhere and just writing a simple service across that. I mean, very similar to like the, the bridge domain um, example that Frederick gave uh, last year. I, I think that that would make the light bulb like illuminate for a lot of people. 
Yeah. I need to ask, is, is that one of the demos that actually sold you on Edward Service Mesh? Um, it definitely was a key part of it, right? I mean, so I do a lot of stuff with bridge domains in OpenStack specifically because on the commercial side, every customer needs a completely isolated um, instantiation for their network. And you just spinning up a bridge domain with a couple lines of Go um, definitely resonated with me. But um, ultimately, you know, you're not selling to me, you're selling to the people that I work for. And they just want to see that they can take, I mean, we've got tens of thousands of nodes, you know, managed by both um, VMware and OpenStack um, and showing these, you know, execs that you can take all of that infrastructure and continue to innovate alongside of that on the application side, I think is a huge value add. Cause I mean, the truth of the matter is, is no matter, you know, how many like, packets per second CSIT shows us. Um, there's no vendors right now that are selling me a virtual firewall that's worthwhile. And I'm sorry if there's any Palo Alto or Juniper people floating around in there, but I've played with SRX and the Palo Alto one, and you guys are off to a great start, but it's definitely not something I'm sticking in my production network just yet. So what it, what it sounds like to me is going on here is, I, I think this is a compelling use case for a subset of users because we're gonna have to have some way to, to bridge um, from what's existing right now to what is coming, right? Um, that absolutely has to happen. And, and even when I talk to the most ardent supporters in actual IT organizations of Kubernetes, you know, the, the kinds of people who tell me they don't expect to do anything new uh, that's not Kubernetes a year from now, those exact same people will tell me that they have VMs running at OpenStack or VMware that will continue to run like that for decades, right? Um, and so that's, I think it'll be very important. But what I, the other thing I'm hearing is it sounds like Prem and Fasila and some other folks um, have been working on this problem. Does it make sense to sort of do, to get a subgroup of folks who are working on this problem sort of more out into the light so it could attract other people to collaborate? I personally think it'd be a great uh, idea. Good, uh, yeah, it's a great idea. Okay. So, um, you know, basically, Jeffrey, Prem, Fasila, however you guys want to get yourself out there, I, I, I really would like to make sure that we highlight that there's a group of folks working on this and how people who are interested in this particular problem with NSM can get involved. So if you can figure out what you want to do there, uh, let us know. We'll go stick it up on, you know, stick up the pointers in various places so that people can find you. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, we have the advantage of already having Nikolai with us, right? So. He's got an in on the VMware side. And then, I mean, just being someone who lives, eats, and breathes OpenStack, I can tell you that they're perpetually trying to find relevance in the age of Kubernetes. Um, and, you know, with the Airship and the Ukraino people trying to figure out how they're going to stitch these little, I don't even know what to call their blueprints, but I, I think giving them a tool like this um, is something that they would latch onto, and we could probably co opt some development fingers to smash on keyboards. Okay, should we write something here? Um, should it be as SIG? Yep. yep. So I just came to the realization that the documents group is the first SIG that we have. <laughs> Golf clap. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so no, I, 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 I see where this is going and I think it is good. Um. Good. Uh, how are we in the time? Okay, so we have 10 minutes more. I suggest that we move on to the last uh, bullet here, becoming a CNCF project. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mostly just wanted to stick this on the agenda because we, this is something we would like to do before, um, before KubeCon, right? And I think it's totally cool oh. to get there before KubeCon. Okay. Um, and so, you know, you sort of followed through and I gave links to a bunch of the, the various places. We're going to have to do a project proposal. Probably we want to come through as a sandbox project, but for that we need the sponsorship of two talk committee members, technical oversight committee. Um, now they just seated a brand new talk 
Um, so there are a bunch of new folks there. Um, what's probably going to be helpful is if we go look at the list of folks on the talk, if there are people involved here who actually know some of those talk folks and think that some of them might be interested in helping to sponsor. Did I get the link wrong on the link to the talk? I may have gotten the link wrong on the link to talk. Yeah. Let me fix that real quick. One second. Um, Will be the committee. It's probably just one step. Uh, scroll, scroll down. It might have it on the head on the actual top. Oh, yeah, it members. Does. Yes. It does. Yeah. So basically, they just put a new talk in. These are awesome folks. Um, so if folks know uh, any of these folks in the talk, we probably want to start having some discussions with them to see, you know, basically to help them understand what NSM is and see who might be interested in being a, an NSM sponsor. Um, so I'll, I'll sort of, I just wanted to sort of get that out there. Um, there's still work to be done putting together the proposal, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I wanted to sort of start the wheels turning in people's heads, particularly since, you know, we've got a pretty broad social network here within the group. And so if you know folks you could reach out to, that would be excellent. Hey, Nikolai, do you know Joe Beta by any chance? I mean, you're both at the same company, right? Uh, yeah, not personally, but <laughs> I think I can try to reach out. Yeah, I actually might have him on LinkedIn. I should double check uh, more, more realistically. Yeah, so I mean, and I, I know Matt, I can reach out to Matt. Um, and I, I think I, I also know Alexis Richardson um, and a whole bunch of people in his circle, social circle. But I think that the, the more broadly we expose it, the better it's going to be. Um, Cool. Okay, any other thoughts around this? Um, do we want to go quickly through what the sandboxing? Can't hurt. Stuff? We've got a few minutes left and we're at the end of the agenda, so let's, let's dive in. Yeah, but uh, do, do, do you have a quick overview of what would be the benefit for us? Uh, well, so it, it sort of makes uh, formally part of the CNCF, which I think is probably a a good place for us to be generally. Um, and it also, um, you, know, it, you know, it also makes available sort of CNCF resources in general. Um, you know, so I, I think overall, it's a good thing for us to associate with CNCF since we're really quite cloud native. Um, and, you know, so basically, you know, if you look at the entry requirements, um, you know, effectively, we have to have two stock sponsors, we got to present to the talk, uh, we've got to adhere to the CNCF IP policy, which would include transferring any trademarks on our collateral. Um, I don't think we have any trademarks on our collateral, so we're okay. But, but this is generally good, right? It makes people more comfortable consuming you. Um, and then um, effectively, we would have to prominently indicate that we are in fact a CNCF um, you know, project. So I, I think overall it would be good. You know, it, it also opens up the opportunity to do things sort of more formally with the CNCF. Um, you know, I know, for example, various projects um, have done sort of, of co-located events by virtue of being a CNCF project and a bunch of other good things. We'd also be in very good com uh, company. So uh, other CNCF projects include, uh, well, the graduated ones are Kubernetes, uh, Prometheus, Envoy, and incubating includes things like etcd uh, and so we would be in, in uh, extremely good company with that area and it's actually and it, it's very well aligned yeah so i mean it, it's it's a it's a good place it's where all it's it's basically where all the cool kids are hanging out <laughs> oh. <laughs> what happened yeah. Yeah, and they'll also give us, uh, or as a, provide as a service, uh, uh, marketing and, and other uh, soft services as well. So, yeah, I mean, overall, the, the, the CNCF guys are actually pretty awesome about the support that they provide to their projects. Um, I've been on other calls, for example, um, I was on a call at one point with the, I think this was the Envoy community, and Chris Anacek was on the call, and the Envoy community was mulling about needing to do some things with 
various uh, virtual infrastructure in a public cloud. And I think uh, Chris Anacek's comment was, as long as you give me the necessary information to pay the bill, it's all good. <laughs> so they're just a really yeah. good place to be. And uh, they also currently uh, pay our, um, our packet bill. Which is very kind of them, actually. Um, yeah. Much appreciated. Um, that, that makes a ton of stuff possible. Well, since this call is recorded, thank you, CNCF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they couldn't possibly have been kinder and more supportive to us even so far. But being a formal CNCF project should also open up additional doors. Okay, I guess uh, this uh, is the end of, we can wrap up. Cool. Oh, well, um, one last thing. So I will be at Mobile World Congress next week. So it is, I would, I need a volunteer for someone to run the meeting next week because the chances of me having a good internet connection have, is very low. Uh, well, that will be hard. I'll be traveling too, so not really sure what I... I. I think in general, if we've got some folks who are getting in, who are involved in the community who would like to volunteer, I think spreading around the host the meeting responsibility is overall healthy. So you know, you don't have to be Frederick or myself or or um, Nikolai in order to be the guy who runs the meeting. Um, you know, so if there are folks who would be, like to volunteer, please do. It makes it easier for me to uh, jump in and talk as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is Taylor. I'll um, be around next week and try to help with 10 a.m. I can do screen sharing and stuff. Thank you so very much. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank cool. You. All right, excellent. I think we're right up against the hour then, and we got through the whole agenda this time. I think that's the first time we've actually gotten through the whole agenda. <laughs> yeah. Well, well run, Nikolai. <laughs> uh, thank you. I guess part of it is because uh, we split the document call, so we have to. We, we're doing all the arguments over there, right? Not tomorrow. <laughs> so, not uh, we, now have, we now have a meeting, another meeting where we won't get to the agenda. <laughs> this is not one of those. All right. All right. Cool. Thank, you. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Passez votre chemise qui se mise.